In this tutorial, we will discuss how to explore search results in the search results table. I am using the search from the first tutorial on the search results page, which is displaying candidate regulatory elements active in K562 on chromosome 11 in the vicinity of hemoglobin gamma subunit 2. Each candidate regulatory element has a unique accession, which is displayed in the leftmost column of the table. The left two columns also contain symbols, which provide a summary of each candidate regulatory element's epigenomic profile in the selected cell type and across all cell types. Elements within two kilobases of a transcription start site are flagged with a P for proximal. Elements which are more than two kilobases from a transcription start site are flagged with a D for distal. The colored boxes provide a summary of which epigenomic Z scores are above 1.64 for the candidate regulatory element both within the selected cell type and across all cell types. A colored box indicates that a given mark has a z-score of at least 1.64, and a gray box indicates that the mark has a z-score of less than 1.64. The legend below the table shows which colors correspond to which marks. The next four columns show the z-scores for the candidate regulatory elements across the four epigenomic marks. When a cell type is selected, these columns display the z-scores for the selected cell type. When no cell type is selected, these columns display the maximum z-score for the given mark across all cell types. When no experiments have been performed for a particular mark within the selected cell type, the corresponding column is hidden. The next three columns display the chromosome, start position, and length of each candidate regulatory element. The start position and length are given in base pairs. The z-score columns and coordinate columns may all be sorted by clicking on their headers. The next column displays the top three nearest protein coding genes and the top three nearest genes regardless of coding potential to the candidate regulatory elements. Clicking on a link leads to the Gene Expression app. The next column is a shopping cart column, which allows the user to save candidate regulatory elements of interest across multiple searches. To add an element to the cart, simply click the plus icon in this column. Once an element is selected, it may be removed from the cart by clicking the minus icon. To view the contents of the cart, simply click the cart icon at the top of the page. The contents of the cart are maintained across multiple searches. The final column provides a link for visualizing the candidate regulatory element in the UCSC genome browser. Clicking the UCSC button brings up the Configure Genome Browser view, which allows the user to select data from cell types of interest to visualize in the browser. To select a cell type for visualization, I simply click its row within the Available Biosamples table. The rows in the Selected Biosamples view may be dragged and dropped using the handles at the left. This will change the order in which the cell types will appear in the Genome Browser. When I am ready to visualize the data, I simply click the Open in UCSC button. I can remove a selected biosample by clicking the X to the right of its name in the list. UCSC buttons are also available for various other genomic features around screen. The buttons at the bottom of the table allow the user to quickly add or remove all search results from the cart. The contents of the search results table may also be downloaded in BED or JSON format using the buttons at the bottom right. Clicking a row in the search results table produces a candidate regulatory elements details view, which is discussed in a future tutorial. 